Holy shit. Oh no! Oh! Oh, 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 oh. Man, look at that! Have you ever seen anything like that? And here comes Hurt. He's got some people on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Welcome to this and it's all over with David and Jonathan is the presenter of Soccer AM who never misses a home game at Torquay where every time the home side scores the band plays the Stepto theme. In fact, she's getting sick of the song. She's already heard it three times this season. <laughs> Alan Chamberlain. <laughs> with Gary and Rory is an actor and comedian who writes a hit song like World in Motion or Vindaloo whenever England gets to the World Cup. And now England have been drawn against Germany, he's sharpening his pencil for eight years' time. <laughs> <laughs> we get underway with our excuses round, David, Jonathan and Helen. It's a good outside bet for next year's Champions League for you. Sunderland, here they are, sticking four past relegation candidates Chelsea <laughs> earlier this month. This is a wonderful break, and Quinn has scored. But our question is, why have Sunderland placed a clause in their players' contracts forbidding them to take part in space travel? David's team. Right, well Nick, I'd just like to say that, as you know, Jonathan and I know very little about the game of soccer, but we're very confident, because we have, of course, one of Sky's top football presenters with us tonight, so she can do all the football questions. Mm -hmm. And the fact she's a Torquay United supporter. Torquay United? Torquay United. Died in the wall supporter as well, gives us full confidence. Well, but you're, it's more than just died in the wall, because beforehand, before the show, you were telling us, you wouldn't show us, but Helen told us she had a tattoo of uh, Torquay on her somewhere, and I'm far too much a gentleman to ask you to show us now, nor indeed would I in any way encourage the audience to ask you to show us this tattoo. <laughs> but of course, if they took it upon themselves to do so, then... With it being pantomime season and everything. <laughs> but I'm sure you would like to have a look at the tattoo, bearing in mind it's on the back off. You'd better call it the upper thigh. Yes, I was, Brandy. It was my own stupid fault. I said if Torquay got to the playoffs, I'd have them tattooed on my backside. And uh, they did make it to the playoffs. Unfortunately, I'm not lost sure we want this, do we? <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure. There you go. That's got to be worth three points, isn't it? There's a very big treat here for Arsenal supporters. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'm afraid I can only get AFC on it. <laughs> so, back to the question. <laughs> is this this space thing... Jo J Sunderland, I mean, a Geordie in space is a terrifying thought, isn't it? Mm. Isn't a Geordie going up with one small step for mankind, but only after I've finished me tabs, lass. <laughs> you would be standing on the surface of the moon, no space suit, just a T-shirt on. <laughs> asking the moon man outside, come on, you astro Nancy! <laughs> Would it be it. when Stefan Schwartz signed uh, for Sunderland, they found out that he'd booked a seat on the first commercial flight to the moon? It's absolutely correct for three points. Well done, yeah. Yeah, yeah the answer concerns Swedish midfielder Stefan Schwartz. After Sunderland found out that his agent had bought him a ticket for the first commercial flight to the moon, they put a clause in the players' contracts forbidding all space travel. By a curious coincidence, Aston Villa have placed a space travel clause in Stan Collymore's contract. He's going to be strapped to the nose cone of the first commercial flight. <laughs> Gary, Roy and Keith, it's boxing for you. Back in October, Britain's Adrian Dodson was seconds away from a points victory over Canada's Alan Bonamy, which would have clinched the Commonwealth middleweight title when this happened. There's about 45 seconds to go. If Dodson hangs on, well, he may well get the decision. And he's got to hang on, and he's being very naughty. And something has happened, and I think he's bitten him. I think he's bitten him. He stopped the contest, and this is really, really extraordinary. So Dodson bit Bonamy and was disqualified, but of course he had a good excuse for this ungentlemanly behaviour. What was it, Gary's team? I must say, I haven't been bitten in the ring since Julian Clare is on the show. <laughs> You go on with a bite on you like that and you try and explain it to the wife and say I was bitten by a boxer. I mean that's a fever. You say, and I suppose the lipstick round your bell end was Mike Tyson's fault, wasn't it? I think what it was is that 
I mean, obviously boxing three minute rounds, ten rounds, about half an hour, it's, it's probably hungry, but if it had a nice little snack in the corner, perhaps a potato bake. Stop snack. it now! <laughs> Stop it now! <laughs> Something nice and nourishing. Stop it keeping... now! <laughs> Perhaps salt and vinegar. Stop it friend. now! And then he'd have to Walk use some uh, mouthwash, obviously, to take the smell away. <laughs> <laughs> Middleweight boxing is, does make you very hungry. I mean, my first fight was stopped after 30 seconds when my KFC bargain bucket arrived. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he said to the referee, I didn't bite him, I was just holding on. Mm -hmm. That's virtually... I'll give you three points for that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The truth, according to Dodson, was that he didn't bite him at all. He said, my head became lodged between his midriff and his protector, <laughs> and entirely innocently, I pinched his skin with my mouth. <laughs> Boxing analysts said they'd never seen anything like it in 50 years of the sport. A major title fight actually screened on the BBC. <laughs> Boxing's most famous biter, Mike Tyson, is to be paid £7.5 million to fight in Manchester. Oh no, sorry, that's Roy Keane. And uh, at the end of that round, David's team have three points, and Gary's team have three points. We move on with our sporting bluff round where the teams try to work out which on the other team is telling the truth and which is talking archers. David's team, your subject is 80s New Zealand test all-rounder Lance Cairns. Cairns continuing to plug away from this football stand in. And he's gone, outside edge. <laughs> oh, well bowled. Lance Cairns has got through with a very good Yorker there. I've never seen you looking in such good nick, David. <laughs> he was a very good-looking young man, wasn't he? He was like a young Sean Connery crossed with a young Harpo Marx. <laughs> what was that hat you were wearing? Are you like a deputy <laughs> dog there? <yeah? laughs> now, Lance is the proud father of 90s New Zealand test all-rounder Chris Cairns, but sadly, he never made it to England in the summer to see his boy humiliate our boys in the test series. But why? Uh, Lance Cairns didn't come to England because he was bitten in the testicles by a poisonous spider. <laughs> Lance Cairn didn't come to England because he had to judge Miss New Zealand. Lance Cairn didn't come to England because he was too busy fudge packing. <laughs> so... <laughs> so, David's team, Lance Cairns didn't come to England because he was bitten by a spider, because he was judging Miss New Zealand, or because he was too busy fudge packing. Missed one out there. He didn't come because the reason he just couldn't be bothered because cricket is shit. <laughs> Excuse me, what, what do you base this on, no. just out of interest? I went to Lord's once. I read a paper. <laughs> so you did regularly went to Lord's and read a paper, didn't you, mate? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Miss New Zealand. I had a Miss New Zealand once. She was lovely with just a sprig of pasta and some new potatoes. <laughs> In the same vein, it's not so much the judging, is it? It's the rounding up and dipping that's... <laughs> they have a Miss Exeter. It's not a competition, it's just a recommendation. <laughs> it's the local rivalry thing. Bitten by a spider. If you were bitten by a spider... Because Peter Parker, who became Spider-Man, he became a superhero as a result of being bitten by a radioactive spider. Not that I believe on his balls, though. <laughs> he was bitten on his balls, Lance Kerr, and then he'd become a superhero with very large balls. <laughs> like a testy man or something. Like that. So if you were a superhero, what would you have been bitten by, Jack and um, A super cricketer? Well, I think obviously a duck. Bob Willis. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so fudge packing, if there was a real job as a fudge packer though, if you really had a job as a fudge packer, you wouldn't tell people you were a fudge packer, would you? you say I'm like a, a chewy confectionery storage technician or something, wouldn't you? <laughs> Likewise, if you were indeed a gardener who worked best uphill, <laughs> you'd say, yeah, I'm an uphill gardener. You'd say, yeah, I'm a green-fingered worker who favours a slant. <laughs> but by that same logic, if indeed you were a robber of some kind who made post offices wearing a mask like a man's ass, you would be a bum bandit, wouldn't you? <laughs> This doesn't help the question, I'm just speculating. You've heard about the paper cone and the blue bottle? What's the paper yes. cone and the blue bottle? I've heard about wolf bagging, I've heard about bagpiping. <laughs> bagpiping is when the gentleman is... I've heard all these things. <laughs> but a paper cone and a blue bottle in all my born days, sweet Holy Mary, no. I'll tell you after. Tell us now. Sorry. Come, we'll cut it out. Use it. I'll tell us now. Come on. We've 
seen your arse, it can't, can't get any worse. <laughs> There's some bloke in the middle who looks like my dad. <laughs> oh, he's been doing it for years. Come on, get on with it. Uh, 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 a West Ham player's favourite way of um, finishing himself off. Well, what? not himself. With a blue bottle, apparently. The blue bottle does it for him. A cone oh, and a blue bottle. <laughs> he gets the paper cone. Well, you've got a microphone on, you stupid person. <laughs> They can't Here, see what I'm this. doing. Just pretend you pretend that's it. Go on. You've got the paper cone. So you've got the paper cone. But just before the end. The blue bus. Paper cone. A what? Blue yeah. bottle. I don't know if I'm speaking for anyone else here, but if I'm working myself hmm. up to a frenzy like that, I don't Tell want to stop and look around for a bloody paper cone. <laughs> You know, this water tastes different now. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be the most ludicrous sounding no, one. It, it, is. Is. it is. It's the fudge packer. Fudge packer. So you think Rory was telling the truth? Let's see if you're right. So Rory did indeed have the right answer. Lance Cairns owns a small fudge packing factory back home in Canterbury, New Zealand. Chris Cairns is a famous sledger and always abused David Gower throughout the duration of his innings. Once he got as far as, you're a complete and utter what before David was out. <laughs> Gary's team, your bluff is all about the buck-toothed Brazilian goal-bagger Ronaldo. Here he is, slotting home one of the goals in this year's Copa America final against Uruguay. But it's actually Ronaldo's girlfriend we're more interested in. David's team, what can you tell us about Milen Dominguez? Ronaldo's girlfriend holds the world record for keepy uppy. David? She's got nice tits. <laughs> Thank you very much. That suit's giving you a whole new lease of life, hasn't it? <laughs> the sad thing is, I, I wish I hadn't given you the matching thong now. <laughs> No, 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 we just found a membership card, David, to a gay cricketers club. <laughs> Signed David Gower, and it's called In the Crease. <laughs> Unfortunately, David will only stay there for three minutes. <laughs> Ronaldo's girlfriend holds the world record for cliff diving. Okay. Cliff. Ronaldo's girlfriend holds the world record for the longest ever snog. Okay, so is Ronaldo's girlfriend world keepy uppy champion, world cliff diving champion, or world snogging champion? Gary's team. Mm. Notice how, ever, uh, how with footballers, the uglier the footballer, the prettier the wife. It's true, isn't it? Can't wait to meet Mrs. Peter Beardsley. <laughs> Gary, on the other hand, has a gorgeous wife. <laughs> it can't be cliff diving. So I don't think she's don't ever had any so relationship. Sure with the singer of that dreadful song. <laughs> Not that rough hairy thing from Star Wars, <laughs> Chewbacca. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> see, John, that, that's that's it. funny. <laughs> no, because it's the blue bottle again out at the end. <laughs> it's a big blue bottle! <laughs> about the kissing? Are you sure it was a world record? Snogging. Mm -hmm. Well, kiss snogging. Kiss. Well, hang on. There's a big difference in kissing and snogging. Yeah. snogging. That's why you don't snog your kids goodnight, do you? <laughs> <laughs> shall, we, shall we let the audience make their own Gary little joke? <laughs> <laughs> Keith, you're an actor. You must have had some famous on-screen snogs of people, have you? Um... Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a Shakespearean actor? I've done it, yeah. Can you quote Shakespeare, Rory? I have seen tempests when the scalding winds have writhed the knotty oaks. I have seen the ambitious ocean swell and rage and foam to be exalted with threatening clouds. But never till now, after this night, yet I go through tempest dropping fire. Are there a civil strife? Yeah, yeah, sword? great, you can do it. Well, <laughs> I can quote Shakespeare as well, this from 1603. Gower's out again. <laughs> The world snogging record was David Beckham and his mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, they never watch this programme because the bloke who installed the television left it on ITV and they can't work out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, wash your mouth out with Listerine. <laughs>
So let's have an answer. Um, it's got to be keepy up here, isn't it? I think. Keepy right. up here. We're going for keepy up here. So you think Callum honest. is telling the truth? Let's have a look. Yeah. Yes, Helen was as honest as the day is long. Milen Dominguez's ball juggling record is 55,187 times in 9 hours 6 minutes. Milen is now pregnant with Ronaldo's son. God, it starts teething. <laughs> When Ronaldo was at Barcelona, the fans were so fanatical he used to drive around in a Morris Minor so people wouldn't recognise him. In much the same way, when Gary was at Barcelona, he would break into a sweat to avoid being recognised. <laughs> and at the end of that round... At the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. In our next round, we see a pair of goal celebrations and we'd like to know what stories lie behind them. Gary's team, his lead is Michael Bridges, polishing off Middlesbrough in September. And that's it, in lots of space, the quick look up, and it's Bridges! Not terribly cleanly struck, but he's happy enough and so are the lead supporters. So, Gary's team, what was that all about? Um, I think because they were playing uh, <laughs> Middlesbrough, is he saying Gascoigne's nicked my kebab? <laughs> see, that's funny, Jonathan. Yeah, mate. Do you see the difference? Yeah. I do, yeah. <laughs> Someone's eaten all the pies. They sing that Arsenal, you know. When you arrive. Yeah. Right. <laughs> is he playing an edible harmonica? <laughs> or what Bill Clinton calls a harmonica? <laughs> When he joined Leeds from Sunderland, he, they had a thing where he, he let himself get a bit heavy in the summer, hadn't he? I'll give you three points for that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. That was that was good. Good. Here are Leeds' with Michael Bridges and Jonathan Woodgate to explain. Right, the celebration about Michael is that he's a, he's a bit, you know, a bit chubby around here, a bit dumpy in here, but that's not his own fault, you know. He likes eating a lot of food, you know. But we're, we're starting to think he's looking a bit like Rory McGrath, you know. <laughs> David's team. Your action comes from Exeter City, the crunch derby against Torquay earlier this month. This is Boylan, Alexander pulling away to the right, this is Gary Alexander. And an excellent finish to a fine move by Exeter City. Gives them breathing space now at 3-1. to one. And here's another rehearsed move taking place. That was Gary Alexander with Exeter's clincher in a 3-2 win, but can you account for what followed? Can we, can we have a look at it again? Because the, the, most of them are doing some weird thing on their backs, but one guy seems to have got it really wrong. Look, this guy here. He's, is he a big Gary Lineker fan? He's impersonating Gary. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a blue bottle in a cone in the other hand. <laughs> Someone groaned then. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> groaned. Hold on, there's a bumblebee. No, no, no. Look, blue bottle. <laughs> The blue oh, bottle. Blue the bottle. bottle. The blue bottle. <laughs> bottle. <laughs> the swelling's great, but the pain's unbearable. <laughs> I do know what that celebration is all about because it was at the local derby against Torquay United. They did that celebration to me, and it's it's like it's on your bike, on your bike. To you? Yeah, you're because to you. I, my show goes out on a Saturday morning. Um, before before that game, and I was giving some of them a bit of stick on the show because it was Derby Day. Fair enough. Three points. I'll give you that. That's well done. Very yeah. Very <laughs> Let's hear Exeter's Chris Curran give us the answer. Hi, Helen. As we all know, Helen's a massive Talk United fan. So in our Derby game against them, we thought we'd do something for her. So we turned around and told her to get on her bike. But anyhow. What is he doing? I don't know. <laughs> so they were telling Helen here to get on her bike in a local rivalry type of way. Exeter's second round against Aldershot last month was suspended after only 30 seconds due to crowd congestion. They were both jammed in the exit. <laughs> 
Leicester's manager, Peter Fox, also cleans the dressing room and washes the kit, although the club have now advertised in a newsagent's window for someone to do the job full-time, leaving Foxy free to concentrate on the cleaning and the washing. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have nine points. Time for our regulars to fondle a stranger without so much as a slap as we play Field the Sportsman. David and Jonathan, you're first this week. Come on, David. Show us your suit, come on. I think your suit's shagging the chair, I'm stuck. <laughs> oh, I'm really going to want it back now, aren't I? <laughs> I can't believe I let him a really flash suit. Look, he's wearing white <laughs> bloody socks. Oh, no. <laughs> Blindfold's on. And can we have our first mystery guest, please? Okay, you can start your tampering now. He's what pedestrians will be wearing when Beckham gets his licence back, aren't they? <laughs> oh, that's a bat, David. No, what's oh, that? that? <laughs> is it Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> is it? Well, the question is, is it English at all? He's it? not very strong, is he? Is it a bloke? He's not a very strong bloke. Must be a cricketer, probably. If it's, if it's one of those... <laughs> One of those slightly gay cricketers, we know. <laughs> if he's a cricketer, he'll have a box on, won't he? Oh, Jesus. You could have won your box. What kind of cricketer comes to this show without a box on? I've just got a handful of me and veg. Is it, is it one of ours? Possibly. Is it one of us? Okay. I was hoping for the smoothness of Action Man. Defensive. He's got those um, big boots that you like, the big gauntlets. Who's left? <laughs> is it Ramprakash? It is, is it indeed Mark Rampercash. Rampercash. Wonderful. <laughs> Mr. Rampercash, I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. I'm your figure now, David. Put a few names first. How, how did you what know it was him, just by feeling his body? <laughs> Have the card back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 no! Ah. Sue, no. Sue. That was don't, nasty. I've told you, don't call me Sue. <laughs> <laughs> That's three points, Gary and Rory, if you well can move to your positions. Line falls on. Okay, can we have our second mystery guest, please? Your 90 seconds start now. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing over there? <laughs> Is anyone here? Is that you? Who's that? Oh, hello, Gary. <laughs> ah, I can't, there's no so one, yeah, there's that, no one here. Oh, this one, that's that. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> That is I not know, part of a human being. <laughs> what the hell is that? Oh, yeah. I smell pine. <laughs> that that? Oh, hello. <laughs> it's this? a group of men with some old rope. It's our production <laughs> team. <laughs> <laughs> is it the British Thrill Bell Ringers Association? <laughs> Dutch Mountaineers? <laughs> yeah. It's oh, got to be tug of war, isn't it? What else? Yeah. Um, who are British they? champions. Not the name. World champions. World champions, the English tug of war team. Wow. 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 That would be a good sport, wouldn't it? Because you could be really rubbish at it, but let the others carry you. <laughs> Couldn't you, David? <laughs> <laughs> and so at the end of that round it's maximum points David's team with 12 and Gary's team with 12 <laughs> we end as we habitually do with the name game David's team can go alphabetically ok you have 90 seconds as many names as you can starting now alright this is a, it's a South African bowl I believe it sounds a bit like uh, a shaven testicle ok <laughs> 
the second name would be just one of your testy, and the oh. second name is like if you removed all the hair from a sheep, that would be it. It would be sheer. No, you were sure. close. Sure. To... There you go. Well done. Okay, uh, she's a ex swimmer, very famous. She was a gladiator as well. She used to present the Big yeah, Breakfast. Yeah. Well done. Okay, this guy. Ah, uh, he was Manchester United. I think he might start with Torquay. And, uh, yeah, well, well done. Uh, this black, I'm simply the best. I'm simply the best. <laughs> yeah, so easy. This second name is like a lovely old-fashioned bread. A big, crusty old... La old ladies wear them as well. Like an old, <laughs> we saw yours earlier. Us? No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Bloomer. Yeah, okay, first name. Uh, we had the snooker player on the other week taking over you. His first name Steve, was... There you go, Steve, Steve Bloomer. Bloomer. All right. Oh, man. If your penis made a noise like a duck, this would <laughs> describe it very well. He's a New Zealand runner, I believe from a long time ago. Second name is like a duck would go... Quack. It quacks, OK. And the first name is another word for your old man, your todge. <laughs> Dick. 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 Dick quacks. quacks. There you go. Uh, Portuguese player, uh, pretty boy, ex-West Ham. Danny. There, well done. Um, first place would be where lots of trees grow. Lots forest. of trees grow in the forest, forest. And then you go to cities, they're also known as... Come on, David. City, forest, cities are cities. Um, towns, states, provinces... Oh. Oh. Well, what was it? What was it? Now, the forest town? Nine will do it for you, Rory. Okay, United Second Star. Hang on, aren't they? Now, famous box of the world's favourite sportsman, apparently. Muhammad Ali. Um, uh, big fat goalkeeper of the Flying Pig of Everton now plays tough. Never, Never sound tough. Yeah, very good. Um, uh, Liverpudlian, um, Liverpudlian player. His first name sounds a bit. Um, Bobby Fowler. Uh, uh, Mastoid. <laughs> <laughs> Mastoid. Oh dear, Gary! Didn't you go to school? Second, what do you take photographs with? Camera. Camara. Camara. Teach yeah, very good indeed. Uh, this is a Brazilian girl who's very good at keepy uppy. Ronaldo. Girl. Uh, Brazilian girl. Uh, yeah, you're the, the girlfriend forgotten. that you have forgotten. Ronaldo's girlfriend. Yeah. That will do nicely. No, it won't. <laughs> Um, it's it's, it's Mar Portuguese for Dominic, the second oh, name. Oh, Dominguez. Yeah, and the first name is, sounds like someone from Milan. Kiki. Kiki? Milan. 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 This is the bloke who used to present um, um, Mastermind. Magnus. But Magnus. in the middle of his name, he's got... Well, when a team plays each other, they put a little letter in the V. v and what's that short for? Versus. Versus. And take the sus off the end. <laughs> Magnus, but Magnus and his lover. Uh, uh, a gangster, 30s... Uh, Al Capone. Without the Albit. Capone. Capone. Excellent. <laughs> First name, the same as uh, Redknapp, the manager. Harry. Harry. And this guy's like a clown. Harry, Harry Joker. A baker yes. makes a bread. Harry bread. Joe, Harry no, Doble. No, a baker makes bread, a clown... Makes jokes. No, a baker is a bread maker, a clown is a... Makes a twat of himself. It's a, what, what's a big word for, you know. Harry makes a what twat make? of himself. Let's have, let's, have some, let's have some... Let's have some... Fun. Fun maker. Oh, no, I'm happy now. Yeah. So, Keith, who's this person you know from Milan called Kiki, then? I'm afraid you remember when this was around before. Well, Gary's team has 19 points, but the winners this week is David's team with 20! Oh, no. wow. Thanks to David, Jonathan and Helen, Gary, Rory and Keith. We're all off to go fudge packing with Lance Cairns. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. David Baddiel and Claire Balding join Nick and the regulars on Christmas Day at 10 past 11. And we're living the 70s next tonight on BBC One. It's Slade.